Protect our water, protect our air, protect Mother Earth, protect yourself. Just remember, we, have, we come from a planet that is full of salt water. The majority of the water that we depend on is being destroyed and we're witnessing it. We're losing memory within the organic waterways. You cannot put memory into a bottle of water that's been filtered. So if we're taking out the memory of something that is supposed to be nourishing us and keeping us to our full lifespan, we have to pay attention to the genocide, what is happening to this element. This element also feeds the grass, that feeds the trees, that feeds the air, and so on and so on. We need to start paying attention, people, because we're coming in such mass communities in that there, our water space is getting lesser and lesser. Also remember, if we are losing the memory in the water and the pregnant mothers in this stuff that are having these children in them, they're already losing part of that memory. Water is life. We need to pay attention, people. We need to be in this together for, this is an action. This is caring. This is about being a good neighbor. Water is life. Everybody imagine for a second. These buildings aren't here. There's trees everywhere, animals running around. You're thirsty. You walk over to the river. You don't even have a cup or a glass. You use your hands to scoop up clean water. Everywhere you go, there's clean water. Nature's flourishing. You got that picture in your mind? What's it look like? Because it's vanishing. Very, very quickly. I used to be able to go to my grandmother's well and dip a bucket in and pull up clean water. Hers was the last well, the fusion well in the west. Now I pull up that same water, and after a couple days, there's a green algae in the bottom because of agriculture's companion. So it's everywhere. Now the whole res is hooked up to the water line. And that's questionable because it comes from the APA. It comes out of an area that's downstream from nuclear waste contamination. So even though we have places that still look pretty, we have, we have this water coming through that we can't drink. And the animals are drinking it. And we hunt the animals. So we have to worry about whether the animals are clean enough because of what they do. You know? Line five goes through some pristine land, the Bad River. And the Bad River is in peril. That pipeline that runs right through there is in an area where there's significant erosion. The storms we had just this winter are worse than we've ever had. The floods that are there. I don't care how deep you buried that pipe into the peril. I don't care how big that tunnel you made underneath the great earth. The drinking water for 40 million people is in peril. Because as we know, when Mother Nature really wants something back, she has ways of doing it. Whether it's an earthquake, a flood, a blizzard. I mean, look at, look at uh, everything that's happening everywhere, the severe storms. This is just the start. So if we have a chance of mitigating any of this damage to come. It starts with shutting down the tar stain. It starts with... Uh, I see a lot of bicycles. You know, I can't... I, I have a hard time walking sometimes. But I can ride a bike, so I do. I can't ride it everywhere. 
so I have to drive. But I, I do it as much as I can. And that's not the answer for everybody, but it's an answer. That's part of the solution. You know, there's solar panels going up everywhere. Um, that's a good start. There's all kinds of little things that we can do as individuals to mitigate the damage. So we have to do it in a way that doesn't blame people that don't, because if we do, then they won't start. And we, we have to make it easy for them to make that choice. Because at the end of the day, the greed and corruption that comes with the pursuit of money. See, they talked about the black snake coming across the land, and the black snake is an oil pipeline. Well, to me, the black snake is the unmitigated greed in the people's minds that pursue that wealth. So, the question I ask is, how much is enough? And even that oil that's being extracted from the Thai sands, that's the bottom of the barrel. That's it. It won't be anymore. So, Our leaders, the government officials, they're not my leaders. But the leaders of this country and the United States and other countries that uh, support the fossil fuel industry really need to come around to a different way of thinking. And they need to start now because we're running out of time. We really are. You know, I want to be able to to say Ganonio, it's our words before all else. And what we do is we give thanks to all the elements of creation. And in that address, we don't put ourselves above or below any of the other elements of creation because we are just part of creation. And we all need to see ourselves as part of, part of uh, the natural environment because if we don't, we're all gone. Mother Earth's going to start shaking us off like a bunch of sleeves, you know, and it's already starting, and it, it, it's, hard to, it's hard to watch, so, now um, My name is Shadera Kilfoy Flores. I'm here from Madison, Wisconsin, to ask our Canadian neighbors to um, no longer allow for the pipelines to be built or for the tar sands and oil fracking to continue. Please be good neighbors and help us in eliminating this need for oil. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Rebecca Kemble. I'm also here from Ho-Chunk Territory in Madison, Wisconsin. And I'm here with brothers and sisters from Minnesota, from Wisconsin, from Ontario, from Quebec from New York, Seneca Nation, Leech Lake Nation. And we're here to, to tell the Canadian government what you're doing is hurting us, hurting our territories, hurting our waters, hurting our people. And I say the Canadian government because the Canadian government is supporting Enbridge, a multi-billion dollar multinational co corporation to plow through our territories, to destroy our aquifers, to threaten the biggest wild rice beds on Lake Superior, to threaten the entire Great Lakes system with their dirty tar sands oil. What they did in Minnesota on line three in, in 2020 and 2021 is a crime against the environment and everyone who lives and depends on it. They still, they were fined millions of dollars, they paid that, but they still continue to pollute, destroy, and contaminate. Line 3 was the biggest construction project in the history of Minnesota, and it has the biggest power plant just to run the pumps to get the oil from the dirty tar sands from one side of the state to the other. It's insanity. It's madness. And to, to do this madness, the Canadian government, the prime minister, and four of his ministers invoked a 1977 treaty to tell the governor of Michigan and the Bad River Band that they can't take action to protect their lands and waters. We're saying, Prime Minister Trudeau, this needs to stop. You need to stop shilling for Enbridge. I don't care how much campaign money they give you and your cronies. 
I just heard, we just heard this morning that the Trans Mountain Pipeline is now at $25 billion. Your government, Prime Minister Trudeau, agreed to take over this failed, disastrous pro project, and you're indebting the Canadian people for it. In addition to... In, in addition to the financial debt, you're destroying our relatives' lands and waters in Western Canada, and they have been they have been resisting for great grandmother. Do you know how long? It's been over a decade, and they're still resisting. They're free people who are demanding that the land be free and the water be free, and this Canadian government is running roughshod over them. These are the people who have the relationship to the land, who have the relationship to the water. Great grandmother talked about the memories being lost. We're lucky to have these relatives in our midst who, who haven't lost their memory. They know how to relate to the water. They know what lives and grows on the land. And we should be honoring and upholding and supporting them instead of further destroying the lands and the waters on which we all depend. So Prime Minister Trudeau and your four ministers who invoked this 1977 treaty of ecological genocide you need to stop it right now. The governor of Michigan has every right to, t to tell Enbridge to shut down the pipelines under the Strait of Mackinac. That is directly under Lake Michigan and Lake Huron, a 70-year-old pipeline that is 20 years past its lifespan. An anchor hit it recently. Any day that that pipeline could, could just do incredible, unbelievable damage to our Great Lakes system that millions and millions and millions of people and beings depend on. So backing this stupid 1977 treaty, which completely um, ignores all of the other treaties with First Nations that um, the Crown has entered into um, and that this government is not respecting, is just ridiculous. And you're showing yourself to be the corporate shill that you are and not caring for the people. This is. This is not caring for the people when you say all oil at any cost. Alberta is burning right now, crazy wildfires. Um, and, and the climate chaos that you're creating with your commitment to Enbridge and Imperial Oil and extracting tar sands oil is it's total insanity. You need to stop. We came here for a, a long way to come here to tell you that. And we hope someone out there can listen. We hope there are some people in your lives who understand about water, who can help you understand that that you know your children, grandchildren, and their children don't have a chance if you keep on this on this absurd pathway. You have climate goals. How the heck do you expect to reach them while at the same time you're all in an ex in, in extraction? So please come back to yourself. Come back to your true self. Um, listen to your people. Listen to the people who, who still have the memory of the land and the water and, and the vision, that the actual lived reality of the image that, that Joe just um, put in our mind of walking to the water and, and drinking it with our mouths and, and with our hands. Um, so we thank um, all of our, our, our people in Canada who invited us here, all of our comrades and friends, thank you so much. And we're here to you know, support you in every way we can to hold your government accountable and um, water is life. Water is life. Sure, just a bit of context for today. Um, a, a bunch, uh, uh, close to 300 organizations and 6,000 individuals have signed a letter demanding that the Canadian government stop invoking this 1977 pipeline treaty to keep the decrepit 70 year old tar sands pipeline line five going. Um, because it ignores not only indigenous rights, but even the clause in the, in the treaty itself, which allows for protection of the environment against pipelines. And if I could just maybe add one other thing, um, and that is that a lot of the uh, organizing and activism against Line 5, which is all very well uh, motivated, it's about what it's about what might happen in the future, and in fact, it looks, some kind of disaster now looks very imminent because, as Joe was saying, uh, the storms have eroded the river very close to the pipeline in the Bad River Reservation, so hopefully they'll be able to shut that down this week because of that. But in addition to all of the disasters that are sure to come 
if we keep this pipeline going with the measures that Enbridge wants. Uh, in addition to that, we have a kind of duty to shut this pipeline down as a kind of reparation and acknowledgement of all the damage it's done so far. It's been around for 70 years. It helped create, it, it helped to accelerate and create the most polluted part of all of North America called Chemical Valley in Sarnia, Ontario, because that's where this pipeline dumps its product out. And that's where, since about the time that Line 5 got going, uh, Sarnia, Chemical Valley, has become a chemical nightmare for not only you know the residents in general, but especially for the Amjanong people who are surrounded on all sides by refineries, petrochemical plants, etc. So for everything Line 5 has done, and for everything that Line 5 is doing and would do if we let it keep going, shut it down. So we addressed our letter to uh, Prime Minister Trudeau, as well as uh, Melanie Joly, who is the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Uh, the Minister Wilkinson of Natural Resources, Minister Guilbeault, um, who has the environment portfolio, and Minister Miller, who has the indigenous portfolio. Um, none of them even bothered to reply to our emails, but um, we are grateful that uh, members of the Green Party have responded positively. And so we had a meeting this morning with Mike Morris, who is a, uh, a Green Party MP from Ontario, and we hope that we can um, continue working with enlightened members of all parties, actually, within the Canadian Parliament. But we're very grateful that the Green Party has uh, made, helped us make initial contact. The reason why I made this this track over to this beautiful land was to be a good neighbor and come forth and ask the Parliament to listen to the people, to listen to all people. I know when you come into each people's territory, regardless if it's a country, traditional territories, or non-traditional territories, we have this good rule, good neighbor policy. So I came up here out of respect to feed them the information that this knowledge holder has, along with other ones around the world, of bringing information to the people. Because we believe behind these huge, beautiful brick buildings that the people made, that the words that would be held in those big, beautiful buildings would be for the people. And so we need to bring our voices forward we have to introduce this, so we wanted to ask the Parliament to listen to what we are saying and the reason why they're there. So it's accountability in a way, because you have to hear all sides. This is a very public sector. This is not private, it's public. So what we want to say is to save all your constituents, all your people, by shutting down what is disaster. We do not need everything that people are feeding you to be. We don't need it. We need to get back into balance and find this organic sense of being. And we need to stop wanting everything that is so easily disposable. Because humans are not stuck with. You can't take this with you when you leave this world. So, to Trudeau, you know, I know there is something in you because we believe we carry the ancestry knowledge within us. We know you have the bloodline of the Midas. And each time you do that stroke of the pen, the hammer, whatever it may be to make the decisions for the people, just remember your ancestors are listening and questioning everything you do. Because without their knowledge and without their memory, you wouldn't be in the place where you're at. So do the rightful thing and make your ancestors smile because they went through hell and back. So each one of us, as well as you, Trudeau, are here. 
So we need to save this planet, and it's going to take us all to do it. So to the Canadian government, to Trudeau, to everyone that's involved, all we're asking you to do is really reach into your memory to see what life used to be, should be, and we need to move more to the future instead of going down this disastrous path. That's why I'm here. So I live, my name is Alain, I live down stream from uh, line 5, which is line 9. And uh, we don't want the oil from, uh, from line 9, not more than you want it from line 5. It's the same oil and it's, it's as bad for the environment uh, as it is for you. And uh, we should absolutely get rid of it. The government only thinks short term, uh, they think of money. And we should think of future generations, and we should think of um, biodiversity and uh, our health. And uh, these are the criteria that, that should determine their decision rather than money. And uh, that's what they should think about. And shut down line nine, shut down line five, and shut down the tar sand. Thank you. Bonjour, moi je m'en dis bonne année en dehors, mais là tu n'as même pas de bar, mais tu n'as Jason, I'm from the Fond du Band, a Minnesota uh, Chippewa tribe, uh, Anishinaabe. We share the ceded some territory with Bad River Reservation, 1854 ceded territory. I was also a former um, Enbridge uh, pipeline worker, and I saw all the shortcuts that were being done on the line three. I had to stand up against it and I noticed that we had to, we had to do something to stop it. And then I'm um, taking it to line five as well. So it's also in my city territory as well. Well, I shared city territory as we did before. And they do not, they promise that it's safer and all this and that. It's not safer. You know, it's not safer at all. They, they uh, rush it. They reach aquifers. They do shoddy uh, welding. They it's just not safe and it's also not safe for the humans around in the areas either there's a lot of missing women when these uh when these uh man camps start coming around or these crews start coming around from all over the country you know and they're lonely and they seek out these our women you know our women are out native american women are out in these areas there's so many reasons and then they came during the height of covid you know covid is still a thing you know when they come around from all over the country we know they're not safe at all and you know, with uh, the disease, with uh, they get in fights with our men, cars, these man camps, you know, and to do this extraction industry, it's like really rugged on our people, not just the wildlife, but our people in the area, you know. And uh, like I said, they do shoddy work, they breach two aquifers on my reservation on line, line three, um, one on each end of the pipeline, and they cuts right through our reservation. And uh, one of them was the biggest spill, or aquifer spill, on line three. You know, so I had to take a stand against it, noticing all this shoddy work, you know, rushed work, you know, uh, not passed up the code, and you know, and uh, it's 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 it is it's not a matter of when. It's not a matter of if the pipeline spills. It's a matter of when. You think of that that tar sands. It's like sand running through a pipe. It's like sandpaper slowly wearing away at a pipe. Those welds will break over time, just like we're seeing the line, the existing line five. It's gonna break, and it's gonna spill, and it's gonna affect all of us. I believe uh, Lake Superior has like 20%, I don't know, 10% of the world's uh, fresh water. And then that with line three going through the Mississippi and the aquifer, uh, river sheds there. Yeah, we're looking at the majority of the water in North America being potentially affected, you know. Like Mary says, it's not in our memory anymore, you know, the water that we can drink. I was up at Shell River and I was like, oh, this is almost drinkable, except for that pipeline, you know. And through Michigan, it looks, it reminds me of the Boundary Water, some of the cleanest waters in, Min in Minnesota. And Michigan looks like that. It looks like it's really pure, you know. And like I said, we're, we're taking a chance. It's like, it's like Russian roulette, roulette, which one of these pipelines is going to burst? You know, which one, who, 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 who are we to, 
try to say that we can navigate between the waters and the oil. Water and oil don't mix, so. So, me offers you go me bits, been dying, me ill. Stop line for five. Stop line five! Stop line five! Stop line five! Stop line five! Stop the black snake! Stop the black snake! Stop the black snake! Stop the black snake! Bonjour, Wabana Gage Gordon Indian and Disney Cars and Gotcha Nang Gunja Bar and Gage in Rudnap. Here today, the Stop Line 5 and these big banks that fund uh, corporate, corporate uh, extraction from indigenous lands, such as oil pipelines and Line 5. Um, a lot of these big banks contribute to that. And uh, I just want to sing a song that's um, for uh, Sitting Bull actually sang a version of this song. This is a Red Shadows version uh, interpreted in Mi'kmaq in Ojibwe. It's called the Bear Song, which represents courage and bravery. It also represents medicine in our clan system. So Sitting Bull uh, was assassinated for this song, fighting colonization. So, and some of his other songs. Wee-ya-ya-ho, wee-ya-ya-ho, ya And unfortunately, the Oil Bank of Canada became the largest funder of fossil fuel in the entire world as of 2022. And 
Uh, I encourage anybody who um, has an account or has a branch in their community to help put pressure on this institution to stop funding climate chaos, uh, massive violation of indigenous rights, and uh, you know, decimation of boil forest, poisoning of the water, etc. Uh, so the occasion for today is stopping a particular pipeline, Enbridge Line 5, that uh, the Royal Bank of Canada has, you know, contributed huge amounts of financing for. Um, but uh, more generally, um, you know, RBC, actually, well, yeah, RBC stopped funding climate chaos and let's shut down Line 5. Okay.